roiling Asian summer of 1950 had to be some sort of nightmare. Barely five years after they had won brilliant victories over huge, well-armed enemies across two oceans, Western armies, possessors of the atom bomb, were being humiliated, slaughtered, and thrown backward. Their rampaging enemy was not some formidable world power. The humbling defeats were being inflicted by a peasant army, representing less than half of an almost unknown nation. Indeed, most people had to go to a remote corner of the world map to locate the new battleground, Korea. My aunt came in and said, Donald, a war has started in Korea, and I went to an atlas to find where Korea was. I couldn't find it. Big plans for the Leathernecks. Incheon was always MacArthur's objective. As early as the second week of the war, he wanted to send the 1st Cavalry Division directly from Japan into Incheon. But the situation turned bad too fast. He had to deploy them into Pusan. The port of Incheon sat 150 miles to the northwest of the Pusan perimeter, far behind the North Korean lines. It was the key to Seoul and the road and rail junctions that were critical to the enemy's already strained supply line. With a lightning amphibious landing, American forces stood to cut off and trap the 70,000 communist soldiers besieging the Pusan perimeter. They would be caught between the newly formed 10th Corps to the north and the dramatically enlarging UN Army to the south, already planning its own attack. MacArthur's strategic concept was brilliant, but MacArthur was the only person who believed that Inshan would work. The hydrographic problems were tremendous, the tactical and technical problems were overwhelming. The high command officers that MacArthur gathered in Tokyo to confer on the operation were hard-nosed veterans of World War II amphibious warfare in the Pacific. Visions of bloodbath had Japanese crews. The fortified island of Womido, a natural outpost, would have to be seized first to the morning tide. And then the amphibious task force would have to retreat back down to deep water for another 12 hours until the evening time to come back to seize the main port of Incheon. That would leave only two hours for execution. To take, three days later, we sent six destroyers up that channel to pound the island at close range in broad daylight. This ticket back to God's country. MacArthur in victory was much changed from the first tense moments of the triumphant Inchon invasion. Then his insistently repeated question was, have we heard anything of the Russians or Chinese? On October 20th, MacArthur, now acting under instructions from Washington that he was to feel unhampered tactically and strategically, prepared a maximum effort to move to the northern border. MacArthur's campaign for total victory began on November 24th. Unopposed at first, the 8th Army began crossing the Chongchon River. A hundred miles to the east, across Korea's mountainous spine, the smaller 10th Corps continued its multi-fingered approach north. 